um, after the game Sunday, X talked about how having Rob back kind of made him more comfortable with being aggressive on defense. How does having that safety net of a veteran point guard make you more comfortable in terms of putting out rotations just in case X might get some foul trouble? Well, I mean, it's huge. I mean, Rob has missed 10 games, you know, and, you know, we went through a stretch where we were closing games with Rob and X on the floor and winning which was kind of nice, but I, you know, I haven't been able to get back to that here of late because Rob has been out. Um, but yeah, it gives, it, it frees X up a, a lot more because he knows now he can, you know, he can stay aggressive. We got away with it in the, uh, the Maryland game, you know, X picked up two fouls early and hell, we really had nowhere else to go. Next question, Dustin. Hey, Mike, um, we didn't have a chance to ask you this yet. What uh, what actually is uh, Trey Galloway's injury? And again, at this point, do you have a, uh, a timetable for when he might be able to be back? Well, he's got a high groin pull, man, that's, you know, it's kind of way up in there, man. And, and he just hadn't been able to do anything, really. So, you know, I can't tell you, you know, when the timetable is for him coming back, really. I mean... You know, we really – I mean, hell, he's missed 13 games. And, you know, we came into this season thinking that he was going to be a really big part, you know, of our rotation. And when we got him back, we was excited as hell, and now he's 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 out again. Tom. Mike, uh, tomorrow night's the final home game already. And it's, uh, I know sometimes the seasons take – uh, a long time or they seem like they fly by what's it what is it for you I mean how is how do you look back on this from November to now and uh, and your overall impressions of your first year and how fast it's gone well you know it's a great question you know I in the NBA you go through almost 100 games a year I've done that for 34 years so this is kind of a piece of cake um, in terms of you know, an 82 game season versus a 30 game season. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's, for me, it's, it's still, but just basketball, man, but, you know, the college game, it gives you a lot more time to teach and prepare, man. And, and the pros is just, you just, you don't sleep. You just constantly grind it, you know. Next question, Tyler Tackman. Hey, Coach, I hope you're doing well. Um, I, you mentioned a couple of times this season about how uh, you don't want to dwell on the past, kind of what's happened in the past has happened in the past. Um, and, and I was curious, wh where did you get that mindset from? Is that is there like an experience in your life where um, you kind of develop that way of thinking or is there someone that, that taught that to you? How, how, how did you kind of figure out that, that philosophy of, of thinking? Well, again, guys, you think about your everyday life, your, your own individual lives, man. I mean, things that happened in the past, you just, you can't go back good or bad. You know, you can't. You learn from the things, the mistakes that you've made in the past. And you some can't, sometimes relive the good things, but you can't go back and get it, man. I, I just try to – I think ahead, man. That's just the makeup of how I've been – from pretty much the time I left here and went into the NBA. Um, and you could probably say it started here because, you know, the, the, the crazy thing here was, you know, night never lets you forget the past. And, and I don't either when it comes to games. I mean, we always go back and we look at the game. You know, I'm, I'm not going to never let them forget that. I mean, good or bad, we got to, we learn from watching film. And I've always thought that was a major tool, but I can't live in the past, man. I just, you know, I've, I've had a good run, you know, in terms of my life and, and man, I'm just, I take it a day at a time. And, and the fact that I'm back here trying to push these guys in the right directions to do the right things, man, on and off the court. That's what it's about to be right now. Mike Schumann. 
Yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask you something specific about Xavier Johnson's game. It, it seemed like earlier in the year he, when he was getting downhill, he was taking a lot of kind of off-balance, contested shots, um, getting himself in trouble sometimes. And he, he really seems to have developed in that area where his judgment, once he gets past his man, he, he's either taking a good shot or, or he's finding the, the open man. Can you talk about just his progression in that specific aspect of his game? Well, you're right on when you say that. Um because, you know, again, I mean, you know, I watched him play at Pitt and he, he played very loosely there. Um, and I'm trying to get him to play more. And that's no knock against the Pitt coach and how his system was set up. I'm trying to get him to play non reckless, you know, I mean, where he's including his teammates and, and, and trying to, we're trying to make him be a, a complete point guard. A good point guard, man, can get his own shots and can set up everybody else around him. I mean, that's what the good point guards do. So, you know, that's something that we've been trying to teach him, you know, when we brought him on board. And, you know, and he's had a roller coaster ride. I mean, early on, like you said, he was, he got down there and he got stuck a lot of times, didn't have nowhere to go with the ball. And then he went through a phase where, the game started to slow down and he started seeing things around him as well as when it was time to make the right play for himself. And, and then he hit another stretch where it was the other way again. And now he's playing really good basketball for us, which is kind of nice to see. Kevin. Yeah, coach, just following up on that point, you know, you're going to be facing a Rutgers team. That's, you know, one of the best defensive teams in, in the league, along with yourselves. Uh, just the importance of Xavier's decision making. I mean, Caleb McConnell's leading the Big Ten in steals. Just the importance of that ball security aspect of him and the rest of the offense uh, heading into a game like this. Well, again, I mean, you know, we pretty much have seen everything this season. You know, I go all the way back to that St. John's game, and they made us have to play, man. I mean, we really prepared for them because of the fact that they press and. They do a lot of junk things that that make you have to think about what you're doing on the floor, man. And it was a hell of a game. And, you know, this team is no different. You know, they don't they press some. Uh, you know, I watched them against Wisconsin and Purdue. They they pressed a little bit, and, but they are. They are a good defensive team. They play hard. And so, you know, we're going to have to match their effort for 40 minutes, man, you know, in order to come out of here with a win. Zach. Mike, it's it's your first senior day as a coach, and it's obviously complicated by the fact that even guys who are technically seniors can come back if they want because of this COVID year. Who do you expect to go through kind of senior night stuff after the game Wednesday? And how do you kind of – what are the conversations like with guys who may be debating, do I want to kind of call time on my IU career here or do I want to consider taking that COVID year? I haven't really had any discussions with them about it, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I think there'll be a few players that, you know, the, that take the senior walk. Uh, and, hey, I'm all for whatever they want to do. Uh, but at the, end of the, at, at the end of the day, you know, we got to make decisions as a staff uh, with our program uh, once, you know, the season's over with. And I'm sure there are going to be players that, that, you know, with this portal thing, you have no control. You know, I mean, these guys can tell you one thing and, and do another, you know I mean? It's just a part of it. Um, so, you know, I mean, hell, I lost three players last, you know, coming into this season, you know, in the portal, which, you know, two gave me an opportunity to court them and try to get them to stay on and one left you know, before I actually got the job, he had already had a deci his decision made. So um, it's it's chaotic right now, you know, in terms of how this thing is going to play out. And all I can do is, you know, wait until the season's over with and just see where we are as a ball club. And, you know, if there's guys that's going to uh, take that walk tonight and, and as a senior, or tomorrow as a senior, then, all I can do is wish them well and tell them that, hey, if there's anything I can do, you know, I'm obligated as their coach to help them. 
uh, may be pursuing their basketball career or going into the job market, you know, I'm obligated to help them do that. And, and I will, you know, whatever, you know, that anybody decides to, to do if they, you know, if they want to leave. So, um, but I can't really give you a definitive answer because again, man, it's so, it's just, you know, basketball right now is so different in regards to this portal and, and, you know, people being able to come back or leave. And so I, at this stage, I'm just, I'm searching just like you guys are probably wanting answers. So that's where I am. Jim Coyle. Hi, Mike. Uh, the offense has played a, a lot better here of late, it seems, uh, with g getting more contributions from from many uh, different people, whether it's Miller, Cop, Parker, Stewart, Tamar, uh, Jordan, uh, and played hard through the end of games. But even at the Minnesota game, we still saw a end of game. I don't want to call that one a collapse, but uh, it seemed like it, even though Minnesota was hitting some crazy shots, the offense still stagnates at times like that. Um, are, are, what can they do differently to, to fight through that offensively and not let what they're doing affect you? Well, again, you know, I think a lot of it is mental. Um, I mean, when things get tight, you know, guys stop executing and moving. I mean, you can build a 27 point lead, moving the ball and cutting and, and playing freely, then you should close it that way. And, you know, we've just, when things get a little tight and a lot of it is because this team has never won, man. And, and guys are still searching and trying to figure it out. And, and I get it. Um, you know, and I'm going to keep saying it. I got to help them get over the hump, man. I, you know, I don't care what, you know, how you guys think and feel about, you know, it's my job to help them in that regard to relax and play like you got the lead. I mean, that's that's kind of how I've been our MO the whole the whole season. You know, when we when we've lost, we've been competitive, we've led in games, and we played freely. And then when things got a little tight, you know, we we succumbed sometimes. And you know, the, the beauty about the other night, you know, even though they cut it, you know, we we still made the plays that we had to make to to bring it home. Last question, Mike Pegram. Hey, Coach, in light of senior day and, and the fact that some postseason awards are coming out in a few days, can you spot, talk about the season race Thompson has had for you and whether you think he might be a guy worthy of some of those awards next week? Well, I mean, listen, he's been one of the most consistent players in the Big Ten. I mean, his numbers are very, very consistent in terms of how he's played and and we've all benefited from it. I mean, I don't think anybody saw that coming coming into this season. Uh, but again, you gotta you gotta pat him on the butt and say, "Hey, job well done." Still got a lot of work still left. Um, uh, but you know, the work that he's put in, you know, in practice and on the floor has paid off for him, and we've benefited from it.